So Thomas, um, brilliant questions, very important questions. Um, Will we be able to answer them? Yeah. For, both, wanna... for, both for ourselves, but also collectively. Yeah. Because in all of this, is, of course, it's an I, but it's also a we. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, who, who, uh, who are you becoming in this? Stepping up. I think we, I think we all need to uh, step up and um, I hope we all can, can step up to this uh, challenge, whatever it is. And, and um, I, I feel a calling to, to step up. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of us do. I can only agree. Um, we have a question here. What type of civil disobedience is most efficient, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Juicy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I think the first quest, uh, qu question is, um, um, do we want to go down the route of, of civil disobedience? And if we want to do that, can, can we do that from, from a space of love and compassion and, and not, not out of fear or even fear and hatred? Um, can you do civil disobedience out, out, of, out of compassion and what, what would the most efficient way be. I think we can look, look at Extinction Rebellion. I think they are a good uh, example of a movement that have been using civil disobedience in, in, in a good way, but they have also been, been fighting with exactly this, uh, this question of, of what is driving, what is driving the movement and, and what is driving those who engage in the movement. And I also know that there has been tension within the movement between uh, different driving energies. Uh, so um, if we want to have a, if we want to see a, a, a world of compassion and inclusion emerging, then I think that any action that we do needs to come from that space. Mm. Thank you. Next question. Mm. The horizon model is very helpful. Uh, are there any second horizon actions in your view? Understand the question? Yeah, good, yeah? good, good. Yeah. Um, I think what we, what we are doing now is the beginning of the second horizon um, uh, actions that, that we need to uh, connect connect locally um, and, I and I can see that happening the local connection there are, there are many people I can see this in in, 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 in my house here people putting up uh, uh, notices offering services and reaching out to to neighbors in this in this time so I see a lot of people coming together on a very, very local level, but we are also coming together um, globally, as we can see here now. I mean, this, this is a local Stockholm gathering. We were supposed to reach people who could easily travel to, to Stockholm, but you can now as, as easily join from Australia or from, from Brazil. So all of a sudden we, we, we are also seeing that reaching out globally is also very easy and necessary at this point in time. So actions in this um, second horizon, I would say that that is building these networks, whether they are local networks or global networks. And 
uh, reaching out and talking about these things and also developing a bit of a common language between all these different groups and communities that has already been working on this and preparing for this movement for 10, 20, 50 years. But in many cases, using very different language that most people don't realize is actually that we are actually talking about the same thing. So reaching out, talking, connecting, and starting to develop a common language, and then with a common language, start to do a collective sense making, hmm. creating the coherence that is necessary for, for uh, collective sense making. And a common language is part of that coherence that we need to, to create. Thanks. Um, here's another question. I see that there is a knowledge gap in the current movement. How can we, the ones that have practiced, bring those who have not along? So those uh, who, yeah. Is there a way to download these things into the public consciousness? Yeah. So how can we bridge the gap yeah. in the current movement? Yeah. I think we are, we are trying to do that with this gathering. We're trying to do this with the gathering. And also um, the Emerge Media Platform is one initiative. There are many, many initiatives coming all over the world, but the, the Emerge Media Platform with the URL whatisemerging.com is definitely one uh, initiative where we are trying to both show interesting projects and, and highlight interesting uh, persons who are already uh, working from a new paradigm and, and helping this new world be born. Some very, sometimes very, very simple projects, but still coming from, coming from a new space. So we want to highlight that and, and give uh, um, good examples and hope that there are so many things already happening. But then also, on, on the more knowledge and, and uh, model side to uh, in the forms of videos and articles and in, in other ways try to spread a knowledge and an understanding not of the emerging world because we do not know what is emerging but spreading an awareness of the process and how we can interpret that process, but perhaps even more importantly, how we all can influence that process for, for, for the greater good. Thanks. We only have like one minute left for this, uh, but I'll, that's one more question. How do you think China, India, Russia, and the US will de develop in these in-between times? Yeah. That's very interesting. Do you That's have a interesting. short answer for that? No, but I think, but I think it's, it's, it's a very intelligent question. And, and of course, I mean, we, we are in a very, very interesting point in, in time right now. And now I'm just sort of completely guessing on the geopolitical uh, situation. And I think... It, the starting point is what is happening in, in, in the US. And I would give it 50% that this will be a, a, a very difficult time for the US, but they will come out on the other side uh, uh, different, but very much the same. Losing this opportunity, just like we all lost the opportunity with the financial crisis in, in uh, 2008, where we just put a lot of money into the banks and then went back to business as usual, even though we were just 12 or 24 hours away from a complete meltdown of the world financial system. So that, that I give it 50% that, that that will happen. But then there is definitely a chance or a risk that, uh, and especially with the, with the latest statements from the White House, that 
this will turn into a bloodbath in the US and that the US might be worse than Italy and Spain and that this might end up with uh, in a civil war in the US. And the US will, will completely disappear as we know it and we don't know what, what such a civil war would, would lead to. And even if we wouldn't end up in such a worst case scenario, I definitely think that there is a huge risk say 25%, that this is the shifting point where the, world, where the world influence will move from the US to, to China, and that that will be one of the, uh, one of the effects. Especially since uh, what is happening right now in Europe is a little bit um, putting, um, I wouldn't say that it's justifying but before it was very easy to say that well Ch china managed this situation but they did that with very authoritarian and dictatorial in a dictatorial way we in the western democracies can do this without uh, these drastic measures but when you see what's happening here in the west and especially in the U in the uk where i um, have have my children uh, the fact that people were not uh, without drastic measures um, obeying the requests from, from the authorities and the, and the experts to stay at home. But we were, or they were, uh, forced to take equally hard measures. That, that is something that, that uh, will uh, make it more difficult for us in the West to, uh, to resist the, uh, the Chinese uh, ideology. So this can very much play a very, very important game in the um, geopolitical field in the short term. And this is all one, horizon one. Mm. So then the question is, will there be an horizon two and what will horizon three be? And 30 seconds on that, I, I believe that we will not be moving towards a world government. We will not go to a top down. We will hopefully not going to a totally fragmented world, because a fragmented world will never solve the global ecological problems or things like that. I think just like we are experiencing now that we are connecting on a local level and on a global level, that is where the world needs to go. We need to have strong local communities, but then a compassionate cooperation on a very loose global level. But again, this is just my key listening. <laughs> Thank you for your key listening. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for your reflections. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, yeah, it sure is. We live in interesting times. We do, indeed. Yeah.